Nonviolent Communication by Marshall B. Rosenberg. The summary was produced by The Good Book Company. Communication patterns that may seem normal to you may actually be contributing to dysfunctional relationships, frustration, and misunderstandings. People often make both moralistic and value judgments. However, when you compare people to each other, you won't be able to establish authentic communication. Similarly, you won't be able to communicate properly with other people when you don't accept responsibility for your actions. It's worth noting that whenever you talk about having to do something or someone making you do it, you'll be alienating yourself from others. Nonviolent or Compassionate Communication, NVC, is a way of communicating that leads us to give from the heart. With the help of Nonviolent or Compassionate Communication, NVC, you can completely change the way you see your actions. There are four basic components to NVC. Observations, feelings, needs, and requests. In order to truly alter your consciousness and change the way you see your actions, you will have to work through all of these components. Start with observing what's going on around you. Share how certain events make you feel. Talk about what you need and don't be afraid to ask others for help. When you ask someone to do something for you, Make sure that your request is specific. On top of that, it's crucial that your request be realistic. Nonviolent or compassionate communication have two basic parts to it. The first one involves you expressing yourself by working through the aforementioned components, while the second part is about receiving engaging communication with empathy so that you and your counterparts can work through the components together. NVC can be applied to any type of relationship you have, whether it's personal or professional. Observation. Observation is a lot different from evaluation. In order to do this, you should think about the observations you want to mention and identify whether an evaluation is attached to them. What you observe and notice should be specific to a certain context and time. You should avoid using words like frequently and never, unless you can tie them to specific observations. In fact, it's best not to use any time-based words in these instances. Identifying and Expressing Feelings It's hard to develop the insight of knowing what you feel, since you'll have to do this completely on your own. Aside from it being hard to identify and express your own feelings, it can be challenging to know what people around you are feeling. This includes people who are very close to you, like your family members. In order to develop the ability to identify your feelings, you'll first need to learn how to distinguish emotions from thoughts. If you are in the habit of following the statement, I feel, with the word that or someone's name, then you're likely intellectualizing an emotion. On the other hand, in case you can replace I feel with I think in a statement, you'll need to put in more effort to identify your emotions. First, we observe what is actually happening in a situation. What are we observing others saying or doing that is either enriching or not enriching in our life? When another person says or does something, it can serve as the stimulus for what you feel. However, it's important to note that this can never be the cause of your feelings. When you feel something, it's essentially a reaction to another person's actions or statements. The reaction represents a combination of what you need and what you expect to hear or see at that particular moment. In the event that someone says something negative to you, you will have four different ways of responding. Your first option is to blame yourself. Another choice is to blame others. Your third option is to pay attention to what you need and feel. Finally, you can also decide to pay attention to what other people feel and need. When you hear a negative statement and think through all four of these options, you'll be able to better understand the situation you're in. You'll become aware of what's happening around you, as well as what others are feeling. Identifying Needs a lot of people don't know how to properly identify their needs. On the other hand, it comes sort of natural to criticize other people when your needs are not met. Let's say you want to keep your home clean and organized at all times. In case one of your family members leaves a coat out, you'll likely nag them as soon as you notice. Nevertheless, you will nag them without really noticing that you have a need for a clean home. People are quick to hurl accusations when something is not as they want it to be. This often happens in both small and large companies, usually between workers and business owners. In order to avoid conflict, you'll have to learn how to identify your needs. 
When we simply express our feelings, it may not be clear to the listener what we want them to do. There are many different types of needs. You have spiritual needs, such as harmony and beauty. There are also essential physical needs, such as water and food. In modern society, there is a need for integrity and autonomy. In other words, a need to have the freedom to create your vision and choose your values. Other common needs include acceptance, a sense of community, as well as appreciation. Before other people can value your needs, you must be able to identify them yourself. This is one of the first steps of a process called emotional liberation. The journey known as emotional liberation consists of three major parts. Emotional slavery, the obnoxious stage, and emotional liberation. You experience the first part when you start feeling responsible for what other people feel. The obnoxious stage comes when you decide to reject this responsibility. This allows you to determine what you are definitely not responsible for. The third part comes when you take full responsibility for your actions. Ask for what you need. The fourth component of nonviolent communication involves making requests. In other words, it's about asking other people for things. To do this successfully, you'll need to use active language whenever you ask for something. Make sure you are always specific and positive with your requests. Avoid asking people not to do something. Instead, your requests should be specific positive actions that another person can take. People often make the wrong type of requests in relationships. It's never a good idea to ask your spouse not to spend as much time at work. Instead, ask to do more things together when you both have the time. A simple request like talking to each other more can improve your relationship and let your partner know what you want and need. In case you decide just to express your feelings, there is a good chance your spouse won't realize what he or she has to do to make you feel better. The more we empathize with the other party, the safer we feel. In order to avoid making your requests sound like demands, you should express your feelings and needs whenever you ask for something. It's also a good idea to ask your listeners to repeat what you told them to ensure they understood you properly. If someone declines your request, you should empathize with them. Meanwhile, make sure to thank those who agree. When we first begin asking others to reflect back what they hear us say, it may feel awkward and strange because such requests are rarely made. In this part of NVC, you will have to do more than just make a request. Ask your listeners to share what they're thinking about your request and whether they want to take a specific action. It's worth noting that asking a group for something is a more difficult process than asking just one person. In order for a group of people to understand you, you'll need to be very clear and direct. However, make sure you avoid presenting your request as a demand. A demand is perceived as a negative thing, which means hardly anyone will agree to it. Know that even when you are making a request, your main goal should be to build a relationship based on honesty and empathy with someone else. NVC Interactions When you listen to others, you have to give up any preconceptions you may have about them. Avoid any communication patterns that make it harder to build empathy, such as advising, educating, consoling, and correcting people. Instead of trying to achieve intellectual understanding, you should pay attention to others' feelings and needs. People feel safer if we first reveal the feelings and needs within ourselves that are generating the question. It's a good practice to paraphrase what you think you have heard. In case you didn't hear the other person properly, he or she will correct you, and you'll avoid any further misunderstanding. In case you're right, the person you're talking to will confirm what you just paraphrased. If someone doesn't give you an answer, you'll need to figure out what feelings and needs lie behind the silence. Compassion for yourself One of the main benefits of nonviolent communication is that it will help you develop compassion for yourself. Without having compassion for yourself, it will be nearly impossible to respond to others with sympathy. Thankfully, you can use NVC to grow as a person and avoid misunderstandings in communication. Our objective is a relationship based on honesty and empathy. Having compassion for yourself will help you prevent reinforcing self-hatred and disapproval. This skill can come in handy when you make a mistake as it will help you avoid criticizing yourself and generating shame. Keep in mind that whenever you judge yourself, you'll think only about your unmet needs. 
Nonviolent communication will help you understand your feelings and needs that came about from things you now regret. Once you start learning from the past, you'll be able to forgive yourself. The clearer we are about what we want, the more likely it is that we'll get it. A lot of people will try to tell you that they do most things only because they have to. If you're doing something only because you feel like you must, you're essentially acting out of fear, shame, guilt, or obligation. This will not make you happy, which is why you should try only doing things that contribute to life. For instance, try doing only things that you know you will enjoy. Deciding to use this approach to making decisions will make you happier and more energized. The next time you have to do something, try making a list of actions you need to do in order to accomplish it. Go through each item on the list and acknowledge that you're going to do it. Say, I choose to, followed by the description of each action you'll take. Make sure you also identify the desire that fueled your choice. In case you determine you're going to do something that you can't fully embrace, try to avoid doing it. Anger. Anger is a powerful emotion that can misdirect your energy. By putting NVC to use, you'll be able to express this emotion usefully. First of all, you'll cut off the link between your anger and other people. This will have a huge impact on the quality of your relationships, since you won't be negative in communication. You'll essentially stop blaming others for what you feel, and instead work on identifying which need of yours isn't being met. Making requests in clear, positive, concrete action language reveals what we really want. It's important to note that people can become angry, and even violent, when they believe other people are causing their pain. The next time you get angry when talking to someone, take a few moments to take a breath and relax. Don't fall into the trap of yelling at your listeners, but instead try to actively empathize with them. Resolving Conflicts There is a way to resolve conflicts using nonviolent communication, and it differs from most of the other methods of handling disputes. Most methods rely on mediators, offering an outside opinion on the issues at hand, and helping all parties reach an agreement. The NVC style of resolving disputes involves establishing a connection between the